So here in this lecture we talk about orientations. So before we define orientations, we want orientations to have two certain specific properties. So the first one is that it should be preserved under rotations. And the second one is it should be reversed by reflection. So let us write down what I have just said. So it's preserved under orientations and the second is it is reversed by reflection. So we have the following the algebraic topological definition for orientation. So an orientation of Rn at a point x yeah, so you take orientation of Rn. Yeah, so what is it, the orientation of Rn at a point x? So it is nothing but uh, choice of the generator of the following homology group. So orientation of Rn at a point x is nothing but choice of a generator of infinite cyclic group. So infinite cyclic group, this one, Hn, Rn, comma, Rn minus x. So the coefficients are in z, yeah, coefficients are in integers. So the ring of integers. So we need to verify the two properties. So first we notice the following isomorphisms. So the first isomorphism this comes from the long exact sequence of the pair rn comma rn minus x yeah so this was also used in proving rm is equal to rn for m equal to n so the second one comes from deformation retract yeah so now i've already said deformation retract that means it has to be a sphere So since we have reduced everything to the sphere, things should be easy now. The first thing you notice is rotations for Sn minus 1 have degree 1. So rotation always has degree 1. So degree of rotation is 1 plus 1. and reflection has degree minus 1. This we have already covered in the degree lectures in homology. So yeah, you can also write as alpha going to alpha and alpha going to minus alpha in the case of reflection and alpha going to alpha in the case of rotation. So yeah, this is pretty straightforward. So the first two properties are satisfied. We can always take the generator as 1 and minus 1. So you don't have much choice. Orientation is either plus or minus. So plus 1 or minus 1. That is pretty much it. Yeah, so orientation, we will see later on, orientation has a double cover, which is again corresponding to only two possibilities. Clockwise or anti-clockwise, plus 1 or minus 1. So orientation of Rn at a particular point x determines an orientation for the all other points x. Yeah. So you take a particular point then it will determine orientation at 
all other points say y so this to show this we have to construct the natural isomorphisms so both these points x and y are contained within a particular ball so so again i will say orientation of rn at a particular point x yeah will determine the orientation of all other points in its neighborhood so this follows from excision the first isomorphism so b is the neighborhood of x and b contains both x and y so again orientation at a point x of rn determines the entire set of orientations in its neighborhood so again both x and y are contained in a ball so you have excision here here also you have excision so these both points x and y are contained within a ball this ball you know manifold consists of balls which are locally isomorphic to rn so this is point x this is point y so now we want to talk about local orientation so local orientation of m at a point x is nothing but choice of generator so we pick a point x of the manifold then what is local orientation at that particular point mean so local orientation is nothing but you have the choice of generator of the infinite cyclic group so this infinite cyclic group we write it just as we wrote for rn that will be hn m comma m minus x so again yeah you just take a point x and assign it the generator so if it is integers you just think in terms of plus 1 and minus 1 so the convention is you just write this relative homology pair as yeah you just write it as this this does not mean x modulo a you just write it this is just a notational convention yeah nothing to do with relative pairs or could pairs or something like that so this is just a notal notional convention in particular we will write uh, that above as this so that equality means in terms of notational it is not modulo yeah we have talked about x modulo a so that is not true here so just a notational convention so what is global orientation 
So you have to consistently choose local orientations at all points. Basically, you should be able to glue these local orientations together. So only then you can get the global orientation. So in order to glue them together, you obviously will have to construct neighborhoods around point X and then say that all the uh, points in that particular ball somehow map to the same generator. So, to more precisely, orientation of a n-dimensional manifold M is a function. So, what does this function do? It takes a point x of the manifold and assigns to it the generator of the homology group. Yeah, this we have already said in local orientation. So, first step is for global orientation to define global orientation is the first step is to first define the local orientation of every point x so you take a point x and you assign to it a generator yeah, so this x1 will get assigned to mu x1. Which will be part of this group. So you have, you are choosing all these different generators. Which is fine. But you have to satisfy something called the local consistency condition. So as I mentioned before, you have all these points in the neighborhood. We want somehow all of them to be linked or glued to each other. So let us write down how do we, how would we glue this? So the gluing can uh, be done through the local consistency condition. So each point of this manifold has a ball around itself of finite radius. So yeah, I've drawn a ball. So, so each point X has this ball. So consider these two points Y1 and Y2 in that ball. Now obviously this ball itself has the homology group associated with this ball which is Hn m comma m minus t. Yeah, so with this ball you have obviously then you will have mu b which would be the generator or the generator you have assigned to the corresponding homology group but you also have generators assigned to mu y1 similarly with y2 you have assigned generator mu y2 and then you have these maps these ring uh, or group homomorphisms yeah so this is m comma m minus p written as m slash p then this is hn m comma m minus y1 or written as m slash y1 this thing so these generators have to be mapped consistently yeah so the same generator mu b so you take a single generator mu b and you assign mu b in such a way that it's only mu b which gets mapped to the generator mu y1 and generator mu y2 so basically you have somehow glued all these points in the ball together yeah all these points in the ball come from the same generator and that generator is of the ball so for example if all these points are one 
they all come from say generator of the ball which is also one So if you can satisfy such a local condition, if you can have this ball having a generator, this generator getting mapped consistently to all those generators inside that ball, then we can say that M is orientable. Yeah, you can, you have been able to identify a ball, all these balls and the corresponding points. So let us write down what we have just said. So yes, such that all local orientations are image of one generator mu b which lies in h and m slash b. So, so you take these points x and y in the neighborhood and you should have the following natural isomorphisms. Yeah, so these homology groups because the generators are perfectly matched. So therefore, there is an isomorphism. So basically all the points in the ball are somehow consistent with each other. So if such an orientation exists for M, then M is called orientable. 